Hey guys, we thought we'd give you something different, something fun, new and fresh. And I absolutely love small businesses here in the UK that not just do food, but you know, fishing, farming, you name it, it's exciting. This is School of Wok on tour. Talking about fresh, I'm here to cook a feast for 50 people in conjunction with the new book, Simple Family Feasts. And this is Kez here from Drover's Rest. I'll show you the garden first. So we grow a lot of chard, beetroot, tomatoes, nice. anything we can use in salad. And it's not just all in the polytunnels, but this chard would be great for the caribou salad, right? Mm -hmm. Can I try some from here? Yeah, go for it. It tastes like a proper vegetable. Mm -hmm. <laughs> in this episode of School Walk on Tour, we'll be making Uncle Janga's barbecue marinated ribeye and enoki roll, Indonesian sweet corn fritters, Pinoy pickled chili sauce, and sticking with the Filipino cooking, the showstopper, lechon liempo, rolled lemongrass pork belly. Right, how you doing, Kez? Yeah, going good. Yeah. You got enough for 50 people yet? Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> but this is easy, right? I, I mean, it's maybe not easy for 50 people. <laughs> <laughs> um, but essentially, our gnocchi mushrooms, asparagus, uh, and then you get this ribeye steak that's really thinly cut up in Chinese supermarkets. You can buy frozen, actually. Um, uh, and then we're just wrapping that round before we pop it in the marinade. So the marinade is like my Uncle Janga's marinade, which he, like my dad, never ever taught me uh, what was in it. He'd go, oh, just guess. And uh, I still don't think to this day that I've got it right. <laughs> um, but. It's essentially, I think, everything you find in a Chinese pantry. So, uh, ginger, garlic, spring onion, uh, chili, uh, uh, some coriander, finely chopped up, uh, everything finely chopped up, uh, and then light and dark soy sauce, some English mustard, which I'm pretty sure he definitely has in there, uh, some rice vinegar and sugar, if you want, some hoisin sauce as well, and I'm guessing Uncle Jango would put MSG in there, but I don't. <laughs> Once this is done, marinate it, for as long as you can really. Overnight in the fridge, great, but if it's a few hours, it will, I mean, it's quite strong stuff, so it will take on that flavor very quickly. Uh, and then all we have to do is finish it off on the barbecue. So this stone, it's kind of like an ancient pestle and mortar. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, your, it's been in your family for a while? Yeah, so it's my great grandmother's. Oh, wow. She passed it down, and sadly my mum died last year, but she gave me this Sorry before to hear. she died. Yeah. Oh, and she gave yeah, us, oh, yeah, this yeah. is her, her parting yeah. gift to you. I mean, that's a proper foodies gift, that is. <laughs> and you do, like, you usually sort of crush spices on it. Yeah, so we just roast the spices and then you'd put it here and then you'd be grinding it that way. And it's a traditional South African thing. It's uh, Indian, yeah. Indian. So, okay, so, so okay. they would have, uh, so I'm from South Africa, yeah. but uh, my heritage is Indian. Yeah. My mum's the best cook that I know, and she used to do everything from scratch. Right. So grind the dal here for vedas. The best way, absolutely yeah. the best way. And uh, can I have a go? Yeah, <laughs> go for it. It looks like a lot of fun. Yeah. We're smashing the corn, and because we're making um, corn, like Indonesian sweet corn fritters, which actually in Indonesia, they have a similar sort of pestle and mortar. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's oh, like wow. a, there's a round, yeah. but without, it's not really a bowl. Yes. So it's like around with a light rim. Okay. Um, yeah. And then you have to like go on it and crush things um, in in a very similar fashion. Yeah. So this crushed sweet corn. Yeah. We're then going to use for the sweet corn fritters because mm -hmm. I find that um, it kind of like the the paste that you get out of this. Mm -hmm. Um, helps to make up the batter. Oh, brilliant. So um, it combines it in a way. Yeah, so you don't have to use mm. any water or mm. liquid and mm -hmm. you've got a really like, nice. almost like, it's the, the flavour mm -hmm. of the batter is mm -hmm. sweet corn, mm -hmm. as well as the mm -hmm. sweet corn itself. Mm -hmm. And with all those smashed up, mashed up sweet corn, it creates quite a lot of moisture, so you don't need a lot of other batter, really. A little bit of plain flour, some corn flour, if you wish, and then some egg to just create that sort of pancake, quite thick sort of pancake batter texture. And then once that mixes in with that mashed up sweet corn and all the rest of the ingredients, it creates this lovely, very flavorful sweet corn batter. Pinch of salt. Season it well. Nice and easy. And you can see in true Blue Peter magic, TV magic style, that once you mix it all together, you get this sort of 
dripping consistency sweet corn batter with all that turmeric and the coriander seeds crushed into there and Chinese chives in there as well. That is gonna be delicious. All you have to do now is spoon by spoon, deep fry these fritters for about three to four minutes, 180 degrees C. Whilst Kez is carrying on with the sweet corn, I'm gonna just show you guys a quick pickled chili. Oh, hello. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's literally like, <laughs> So we're doing this like massive 50 person feast here. Um, and we're gonna serve it up like a Filipino uh, kamayan, which is essentially a huge feast all laid over banana leaf. And it's for like, usually the tradition is for everyone to just dig in with their hands. Like you go for the rice here, you go for the crispy pork there, and you do this and that and the other. And the idea is that um, you then have like lots of sauces or what the, the, in, in the, the Pinoy people call um, a sosawan, which is um, a sauce table essentially. And the sauces usually are a um, some different sauces based around chili and the herbs and base spices uh, that are available around the Philippines. So this one here, um, you, you get different types. You might have like a chili paste. You might have, this one here is a soy sauce uh, and uh, lime juice, or in Philippines it'd be calamansi limes and chilies and uh, lots of chilies. The guys have got scotch bonnets here, so we've gone a little less chili than usual. Um, but uh, I've got, I'm making like a, almost like a chili pickle now uh, with these Thai shallots, uh, some ginger or galanga if you can find it, and then obviously chili, but I've got a pepper, a red pepper here as well, uh, to just sort of make it a little bit more tame and a bit of sweetness. Uh, so just slice your Thai shallots. And this is the sort of thing that you can make like days in advance if you wanted to. Uh, your ginger can just be sort of roughly bashed and chopped. I just love the fragrance of ginger because it, it hits you straight away as soon as it's been bashed or chopped up. And like with most of this sort of cooking, the more time you give it to sort of infuse into the liquid, and this time it's gonna be rice vinegar, the better. If you are gonna put pepper in it like I am, it's good to sort of really finely chop or dice the pepper because I kind of want it to mix in with the finely chopped chili in a second. And you're not, when you sort of use the sauce, not really know whether it's chili or pepper, but you get this lovely balance of sweet and spicy. So I've got the rice vinegar in place of coconut vinegar and I'm making as I say like a chili pickle here and you want to really like cover this with your vinegar and then some sugar to sweeten it up and that will work really nicely with the sweetness of the red pepper and the chilies as well because chilies do have a sweetness to them I'm going to add about a teaspoon of salt that sea salt to that I, I'm kind of doing rough measurements here of everything. I'm on a farm at the end of the day. Um, and, it, it, you know, I've got a lot of vinegar in there. Of course, that's going to be sour, but I'm mixing a, probably about two tablespoons of sugar into this whole bowl of vinegar and chilli. I've just added some garlic, some salt, about a teaspoon of salt. And then you want to obviously let it dissolve. Let the salt and sugar dissolve first before you taste it and if you are going to taste it once you it, as soon as you've just chopped loads of chili then just taste it with um, perhaps a spoon <laughs> rather than your uh, your chili hands especially because they're scotch bonnets but yeah that should have melted now let's have a little huh that's hot <laughs> That's really hot scotch bonnet. <laughs> Woo! Let that steep. Let the sugars come out. 
nice, sweet, salty, spicy balance. <laughs> right, now these guys have burnt my taste buds off with the chilli before I've even started the barbecue. I'm going to check how they're getting on. So this lechon liempo, which is basically like a Filipino Pinoy um, rolled pork belly, slow cooked on the barbecue to get a really crisp skin. And it's uh, marinated in like a garlic paste, salt and pepper, uh, some onion, spring onion, whatever flavor you can get in there really, crisscrossed uh, to get all the flavor into the meat. Uh, and then uh, some lemongrass that's just bashed and straight into the middle before you then roll it up. We scored the skin, gonna tie that up, blanch it to get all the fatty, fatty impurities out. Once you've blanched it, dry it, salt it, then slow roast it. At the end, we'll finish it on the fire and you'll get that really lovely crackling. Yeah. So the beef wraps been marinated for about five, six hours. Good amount of time. They've got great coloring from the, from the dark soy sauce and that little bit of sugar as well. Um, literally, on this sort of heat, I'm literally roasting like I'm in an oven. So one to two minutes on either side until they're nice and charred. It's my best mate Owen from, from university doing the hard work. <laughs> So to summarise this feast, it was first off epic, uh, secondly what we had in it, we had the starters of uh, barbecue shiitake on a stick, uh, we had enoki beef ribeye wraps uh, with asparagus and enoki straw mushrooms wrapped around and seared uh, in this marinade was just like my Uncle Jang's marinade, Ooh. and then uh, something crispy always, so we had uh, your sweet corn fritters. Uh, with the uh, Filipino chili sauce. That was delicious. The mains, what? Well, I mean, it was like a tray of uh, rolled lechon liempo, the Filipino crispy pork, aubergine omelette seared on the barbecues behind me, and to top it off, of course, in true school of work style, some bao, but I made these quick bao on the barbecue, crisped up the outside and cooked them gyoza style with a little bit of water to a splash of steam, just to steam that bread through. Wrapped it, those crispy buns, in a cinnamon sugar, dipped in a homemade chocolate custard. And if you weren't here, well, too bad. But more importantly, thanks to Drover's Rest for having us here because it is just an incredible place. If you do come in here to the UK or you're in the UK, come and visit Drover's Rest because it is an amazing place. There's so many things to do. You can forage, you can go campfires, you can camp in safari tents, you can do everything here. Watch the rest of the series, School of Walk, on tour.